kind of curious to get your guys' takes on the run game. Chavez, what do you think about the run game from Miami? Oh, dude, he accidentally hit the <laughs> – he logged himself out. He'll be back. Um, Jordan. Well, I'll, I'll answer yeah. the question. Yep. Um, so I, the offensive line, in my opinion, had an up-and-down game. Um, you know, they, they look good at some points. They struggle at some points. Um, I do think Jalen Knighton being back for this team is monumental, right? Uh, we talked about Charleston Rambo. He was pretty much head and shoulders the best player on the offense uh, through the first six weeks of the season. Um, and I think now having the counterpoint in the backfield with Jalen Knighton, I think it's going to allow both of them to pop, right? Because defenses are – they can't just key in on Rambo and be like, hey, you know, we saw him go 12 catches, 154 yards against Michigan State. That's not going to happen because, you know, you, you can't really game plan for two game-breaking talents. Um, Chavez, I'm sure you could comment on that better than I can, you know, having uh, game experience. Right, uh, right. But I think we're just making the job that much harder for defensive coordinators when we have that much talent on the field. Yeah, Chavez, actually, if you could speak on that, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. I was sorry. Sorry, my uh, my connection dropped. But um, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the run game was pretty decent. I think it was very complimentary. Um, of course, we're gonna mix. We're gonna miss Cameron Harris, but uh, but I think Jalen Knighton is man. He he's a spark, man. Especially coming out of the backfield and catching the football as well. I think they need to uh, incorporate a little bit more of that for him. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely tough, man. When you have to plan for you know a run game and a pass game, you know we have two dynamic players that you know like that we're speaking about right now. Um, it, it changes the game plan, man. Because if if you have a guy who can uh, who, who can go down the field, who can make all the catches, you have to figure out, you know, do we want to play underneath coverage? Do we want to play a top down coverage? You know, speaking of Jalen Knight, you know, you have to you got to think about the uh, the the zone read, the the RPO. Uh, if he's coming out of the backfield and catching the ball, uh, you know, on a swing pass where he caught the touchdown. I mean, if you like, you, you put you can put him with any linebacker in the nation. Nobody's going to run with him. So yeah. that's another thing you have to account for. So. You have maybe you have to bring a DB in to cover him, so it, it changes everything for a defense. So I think if they keep hitting on those points, man, keep exposing those matchups, it, it'll definitely be good for us going forward. I'm kind of curious actually here, Chavez. So say you're lining up against Rooster yourself, say he's the opponent. How do you go about in a secondary trying to limit him, knowing they're going to try to get him in space to create? Mm -hmm. Right. So again, you will have to figure out like. You know, if, if you're talking about a running back, you probably want to play him. Um, you probably want to play him top down, you know, because he, he's coming out of the backfield. So you want everything to be underneath. Right. Give give him give him give him the swing pass. Give him the flat routes. Come up and make the tackle if you can. I mean, again, again, it, it just comes back to the basics, you know, make, making open field tackles. Um, but if I was a D coordinator, I wouldn't I wouldn't put him with a line with a linebacker. I, I wouldn't put a linebacker to match up with him. I will use at least a safety. Um, so, you know, when you're speaking about that, if, if you think he's coming out of the backfield, well, now you gotta you gotta bring a linebacker out of your game. You gotta bring in another DB. And then maybe that opens up the run for us, you know, because I mean I hate to say it, but a lot, a lot of DBs, we don't like to tackle. That's that's not our, you know, that's not our thing. We don't want to stick our nose in there. So, you know, you bring you bringing me in to cover him out of the backfield, but now you're handing the ball off. So now I gotta dive into the into the line. That's not really my thing. So I think, it, you know, it creates a, a matchup nightmare. So, I, like I said, I think they need to keep exposing that, keep finding ways to get him the ball, you know, the screen pass, you know, the wheel passes, flat routes, whatever it is. He, he's obviously a dynamic player. You know, the way that we run this offense, Jordan, um, do you think that Knighton is actually going to be a much more effective guy getting the ball on short passes in space than he is going to be actually as a runner? Yeah, I, I think uh, – well – I mean, just by virtue of, of what it is, I think I think passing the ball gives a ball carrier more flexibility, right? Um, I mean, that way he doesn't have to line up behind the line and kind of dive straight into them. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, just by virtue of, of what it is, I think running a route out of the backfield um, gives flexibility to Knighton uh, as a ball carrier. Um, I, you know, there was a comment on here. T Brown said Rooster's too small to carry the load and he can't block. He's good as a scat third down back. I think that might be a little strong, but I think that is definitely in the right direction. I, I think Rooster will look even better when you have a guy like Don Chaney next to him, um, you know, where it can really kind of be the, you know, the pop and sizzle or the, you know, thunder and lightning type right, of right. 
thing. You know, I, I know that's a little bit outdated. Like that was kind of a thing 10 years ago that the NFL was doing. But I mean, if you have the personnel for it, you got to do it, right? You know, speaking about some of these positives that we've seen today from TBD and guys like Rooster, that takes me back to the offensive line. What did you guys think about the offensive line performance? Go ahead, Chavez. Uh, I think they did all right, you know, especially since we've been, you know, watching them lately and they, they've had some pretty bad games. Uh, you know, I think they did okay. I think they, they did better than they than they have been doing. Um, but I think it also helped with, you know, the running game and the passing game. Everything was flowing. So, you know, we kind of kept the defense on our heels. And, you know, we, we can't ignore the fact that Tyler was, is, is mobile, you know, so he, he, he ran out of a few sacks, if, if we're going to be honest. Um, so that helped a lot as well. But then there were some other plays where, you know, as soon as he set the pass the ball, you know, people were in his face. So, you know, you, you take what you can get. It was a good game. Um, the guys fought hard. Obviously, uh, I think like we spoke about last time, we can obviously see that, you know, the, the guys are playing hard, you know, yeah. despite what the record is right now. You know, they're, they're landing on the line. They're not laying down for anything. Um, but I, overall, I think the offensive line did a lot better than what we've seen lately. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, um, I, you know, kind of a mixed bag. Uh, but can, considering where we've been this year, uh, I think the offensive line had a good performance, you know. Right. So yeah. uh, progress is progress, <laughs> you know, even if it's relative success. <laughs> um, and, and so I think that's all you can ask a unit to do is to improve week week on week, right? So good game for the offensive line, but uh, I still don't think we're up to the standard that we have to be if we want to be a winning program. Yeah. You know, we got our tight end a little bit more involved today, Will Mallory. It wasn't mm -hmm. a lot. But we got him a little bit more involved. Do you think that this is going to be something Lashley is going to try to kind of lean on to show that, hey, you know, we still have faith in Will Mallory. We still think he can be a player. So either one of you guys, go ahead. I, I forgot he was on the team, man. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead, yeah. Chavez. Yeah, man, I, I, I agree with Jordan, man. I, I forgot he was on the team, you know, especially watching the, the games last year. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of, you know, big expectations for him this year. And I don't, I don't know why they just – you know, decided decided to go away from him. Um, there was another, I think, uh, the the uh, the freshman tight end. He had another big play as well. So, yep. I definitely think that that's like another matchup nightmare. He's a big guy. You know, he's got great hands. Um, he's a strong guy. You know, send him over the middle. Yeah. Uh, you know, send 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 him over the middle. Send send Rambo deep, and you know, have have Rooster out in the flats, and you know, you, you leave these defense deep, these defense these defenses to try to make a decision on. <laughs> You know, because either way you go, you know, we can make a big play. So I definitely think we need to tap into that a little bit more, even if there's just, you know, some packages here and there where we go two tight ends, you know, some play action. Um, I, I definitely think it's something that we should tap into a little bit more. Yeah, I, dude, I, I struggle in trying to analyze our offense this season because um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to pinpoint as the problem. You know, we've had so many, like, weird things that I don't think any of us expected. expected. Um, you know, I, I tend to be – fairly realistic, maybe even pessimistic. I thought that we'd have like a top 30 unit on offense. I mean, there's just talent all over. You know, mm -hmm. we had Derek King. We had uh, Mike Harley, who's like one of the all-time leaders in receiving yards here. Charleston Rambo, who's as good as advertised, if not better. You know, stable of running backs, experienced offensive line, Will Mallory. Like, it doesn't make sense, man. So I don't, I don't know whether you got to blame the O-line. I don't know if it's position coaches. I don't know if it's play calling and coordinator. I don't know if it's players that we need to blame. Um, so it's hard for me, man. I, I wish I could say something <laughs> and, and like correctly identify it, but I don't even know where to go with it, man.